forests, complex, living systems protecting our soils, rivers, and lakes, storing carbon and giving oxygen, a home for wildlife and a haven for recreation. Forests also breathe life into Nova Scotia's economy, generating hundreds of millions of dollars in exports and thousands of jobs. All the more reason to practice sound stewardship of the land, to ensure our forests remain productive and healthy for generations to come. You can learn the basics of forest management from the comfort of your own home through the Woodlot Management Home Study course. Module 1 of the Woodlot Management course gives you a great understanding of the basics of silviculture, the practice of controlling the growth, composition, health, and quality of forests. To practice silviculture, you're going to have to know about tree species, from their rooting habits and growing sites, to wind firmness and shade tolerance. For example, how many tree species are native to Nova Scotia? 10, 20, or 30? There are 30 tree species native to our forests. One of Nova Scotia's native softwoods, the balsam fir, is known for dark, shiny, green needles that are soft and flat. It's also the only native conifer with upright cones. Thanks to its aroma and soft needles, the balsam fir is considered an ideal Christmas tree. With shallow, wide-spreading roots, the balsam fir is adaptable to a variety of soils, but grows best on moist and well-drained sites. Maturing in 40 to 50 years, the tree will begin to produce seed as early as 15 years. Module 1 has everything you need to know about all 30 of Nova Scotia's native trees. Make sure you check it out. It will answer this important question. What tree quickly establishes itself after a fire? White pine, eastern hemlock, or black spruce? The answer can save you thousands of dollars and it's there for you to find out in Module 1. To succeed as a woodland manager, you're going to have to know a lot about each species and how they grow. Module 1 of the Woodlot Management course is a great place to learn the basics. A tree is made up of a root, trunk or stem, and a crown. The roots anchor the tree to the ground and absorb moisture from the soil. The trunk is the link between the roots and the leaves for transporting water and nutrients. Now look closer at the trunk with this cross section. At the center is the heartwood. Inactive, the heartwood exists to give strength to the tree. Over here you'll find sapwood, an active wood, which carries water and nutrients from the leaves or needles in the crown. The cambium is the layer of cells where growth in tree diameter occurs. Food made in the leaves is carried down the tree by the inner bark to the branches, trunk and roots. The outer bark acts as a shield, protecting the tree from injury. Stands of trees. A stand of trees has a vital role to play in woodland management. Module 1 will help you understand what it actually means. As we see here, a tree stand is a group of trees that are similar in species, ages, height and density. Tree stands may contain several species in various amounts. That's why they're classified based on percentage of softwood and hardwood. Tree stands can also be classified by stage of development, specifically their average height and age. Soil is also important, obviously. The structure, texture, depth and drainage. And of course the location, which includes the altitude and exposure level, degree of slope and its direction. The physical factors of a woodland, like soil and climate, are beyond your control. All the more reason to know and understand how each species responds to certain conditions. Module 1 is a great place to start. 
and don't be afraid to ask for advice. Local woodland owners have a wealth of knowledge to share, and you can find them through this online link. The modules give you a great opportunity to network, and it's a great idea to work with other people in your community. Um, it's a great idea to talk to somebody that's doing what you would like to do, and you can learn a vast amount from what they've done, and from you can learn from their mistakes, and you don't have to repeat. Myself, early on, I talked to a lot of people. I got out, I went to uh, woodlot conventions, and got some really good ideas, and then I went and visited some woodlots. Um, and even today, I regularly get people, almost weekly, stop and, you know, chat and talk about some of the experience that they've had on their woodlots, some of the work that they've had done, some they've done themselves, some good, some bad. And I regularly have people ask me for bits of advice or different ideas and things. And it's great. And it's pretty cheap, too. <laughs> There's so much helpful information in Module 1 of the Woodlot Management Home Study course. Information that's vital to getting a good start in managing your woodland. For example, the ability of a forest to grow is directly related to physical site factors. Better site qualities produce taller trees at any given age. As you walk through a forest, it's hard to imagine there's an intense competition going on. From seedling to maturity, trees fight for sunlight, moisture, food, and space. Ultimately, a tree's ability to survive in a dense stand will depend on two things, height growth and tolerance of shade. Tolerant trees will survive and thrive under various shade conditions. Intolerant trees don't last long in shade. As a tree stand gets older, intolerant trees tend to die out and are replaced by more tolerant trees, which are better able to compete and grow in the reduced sunlight. It's very important to keep all of this information in mind while planning your tree stand. Think you know your trees? Then answer this. The rate of tree height growth is primarily dependent on the density of the stand. True or false? The answer could help you manage your forest, and you'll find it in Module 1 of the Woodlot Management Home Study course.